what up, what up? We are going to start the second half of Unit 3 in AP Pre-Calculus. Tangents and inverses and other things. Just jump right into it. Tangent, what is it? Well, by definition, tangent is sine over cosine. So we will write out tan theta equals sine theta over cos theta. Now, at this point, we should know what a sine graph and what a cosine graph looks like, but tangent's going to look very different. One of the reasons why is you now have a theta, like an x value, in the denominator. So you should expect to see a few vertical asymptotes. Now, this is what tangent looks like graphically. First thing first, you're used to a period of 2 pi, not anymore. The period for tangent is regular pi. Okay, vertical asymptotes, never had vertical asymptotes for sine and cosine. Well, now you do because cosine theta is going to equal zero in certain spots, like at pi over two, or three pi over two, or negative pi over two, so on and so forth. Okay, now let's graph what this looks like generally. Obviously, you know, those of you who watch my videos know that I'm not good at drawing graphs, but I will try my best. So what did I say? Vertical asymptotes at pi over 2. So we'll label u as pi over 2. Vertical asymptotes at 3 pi over 2. So we'll label u as such. And then u will be negative pi over 2. And u will be negative 3 pi over 2. And so on and so forth. Now tangent has this weird curve looking thing that goes through 0, 0. Okay. The tangent um, cosine of 0 is 1, so sine of 0 is 0, so that, that makes sense. And then it kind of looks like this. It's like this weird concave down, inflection point, concave up. Okay? And then it does it again here at pi. So I don't even write that down. So concave down hits concave up. Same thing over here at negative pi concave down hits concave up. I could have done a better job, but, you know, uh, pay me more. But that, that's basically what tangent looks like graphically. It's different for sure. The thing you're going to have to remember the most is the period is a pi, so that changes our answers when we solve for tangent. But for the most part, that's what tangent does. Tangent is sine over cosine, and many of the things that we do will be based off of that fun fact. Inverse trig functions and graphs. Now, an inverse trig function is used in a moment like this. Say you have sine x equals a half, and your job is to solve for x. You know, normally when we have something in front of x, you would be like, divide both sides. There's no such thing as dividing a sine when solving for x. What you do is you inverse sine both sides. Inverse sine both sides. And basically what you're doing is that cancels out, and you're asking my, yourself or myself, um, what angle gives me the or the sign of what angle gives me a half, and then you take it from there, and then you have your answers and so on and so forth. Okay. Now, um, one of the things that you have to remember is if I give you a sign, and then I ask you to give information about the inverse sign the domain and the range flip. So the domain of sine is the range of inverse sine. The domain or the range of sine is the inverse, is the range. The range of sine is the domain of inverse sine. Third time's a charm. All the rules apply to like cosine, tangent, fun stuff like that. Now, one other word is uh, the word invertible. Okay. Now, invertible not to be confused with convertible. I think I spelled that right. Invertible means can you take the inverse of something? something? And uh, what that is, is you use what's called a horizontal line test. Now you're used to the vertical line test, but vertical line test is used. If I give you a picture that looks like this, right? And you want to be like, hey, is that a function? You draw yourself a vertical line, you see if that vertical line passes through the graph and it does more than once, it's not a function. Well, when you take something that's the inverse, 
you are graphing it over the y equals x axis. And so what you're doing is you're kind of making it a little sideways and backwards at the same time. So if I were to give you this picture and ask you is, and let me draw the same picture, is this graph invertible? You would make a horizontal line like so, and you would pass that through the graph and notice that in this case, it doesn't hit the graph more than once. So you would be like, yeah, that one's invertible. That means the inverse of this graph exists, even though the function is not a function. It's not a function in itself because it fails the vertical line test, but the inverse exists. That's what invertible means. Does the inverse exist? And you use the horizontal line test to do it. Now let's take a look at our three new friends, secant, cosecant, cotangent. Okay, secant abbreviated as SEC, college, uh, is the same as one over cosine theta. Okay, cosecant abbreviated that is the same as one over sine theta. And cotangent abbreviated that is the same as one over tangent, which happens to be the uh, reciprocal of regular tangent, which we saw a couple slides ago. So why don't we just flip those as well? Now we will get into graphing these guys and what the pictures look like. We will get into that. Okay, so don't you worry your pretty little heads off. Uh, what's going to happen is already you will notice, uh-oh, denominator problems. And so we're going to have vertical asymptotes and things like that. But we'll worry about that when we have to worry about that. All right. Now, the last thing that we're going to look at is probably the most frustrating thing that we're going to look at because it's a lot of memorization. But it's not super bad. Okay. There's three Pythagorean theorem identities that you're going to see with trigonometry. Sine squared, theta, plus cos squared theta is going to equal one. Now, usually when you see that, that might end up turning into like one minus, like sine squared equals one minus cos squared, something like that. You will see that every now and then. Definitely memorize this. I'm not sure if you need to have these next two memorized, but I'm just gonna put them in here just in case. Secant squared theta minus tangent squared theta is going to equal one. And cosecant squared theta minus cotangent squared theta equals one. Okay. Definitely have the red memorized. The double angle formulas, the double angle identities is what if instead of giving you like sine something, I give you sine two theta. Well, you can rewrite sine two theta as two sine theta cos theta. Memorize that. Also, cos two theta is going to be cos squared theta minus sine squared theta. Now you might be looking at this and saying, boy, oh boy, that's awfully close to that. It sure is, but it's not the same. It's very close though, which might mean you might do problems where you have to rewrite things and remind yourself that cos squared, by the way, is the same as one minus sine squared. So technically you could say that this is also one minus two sine squared theta. This is also the same as two cos squared theta minus one. You just rewrite it in different ways. Fun stuff. Have both of those memorized. Also have, and there's, co, there's tangent ones too, but again, we're only going to uh, concern ourselves with the sine and cosine because if we have to deal with the tangent ones, we will use what the definition of tangent is. I don't wanna try to memorize too much. The tangent two theta is it's not pretty, okay? Uh, Similarly with this, the sum, the sum and difference formulas, if I give you sine alpha plus beta, okay, you can write that as sine alpha cos beta. And you know what? Let's, let's combine them, plus or minus, okay? You're going to get plus or minus cos alpha 
sine beta. So if I do sine alpha plus beta, it'll be sine alpha cos beta plus cos alpha sine beta. If I do sine alpha minus beta, it'll be sine alpha cos beta minus cos alpha sine beta. Okay. Last one that we're going to look at is going to be cosine alpha plus or minus beta. Okay, this is going to be cos alpha, cos beta, flip these guys, sine alpha, sine beta. Okay, so this would like, if I gave you cos alpha plus beta, you would write out cos alpha, cos beta minus sine alpha, sine beta and vice versa, and vice versa. All right, let's see, let me move my face. All right, so uh, we're gonna start out with a very not fun looking uh, tangent graph. Okay, and then we're gonna graph it. All right, let's move my face, like I said, although I'm not sure if I need to. No, I don't need to, I'm good. What is the period? Well, I have to rewrite this. I have to rewrite it because again, I'm kind of comparing this to my regular sinusoidal graph. Okay, so I'm gonna write this as tan A for amplitude, even though we don't have an amplitude. Uh, B, X minus C, close it, close it, plus D. Okay, A doesn't really give us amplitude because now the picture looks like this. So I'm not going to worry about amplitude. There's no such thing as amplitude, but it has to do with like stretch and stuff like that compression. We don't have to worry about that here because there's no number there. Uh, if I rewrite this and factor out a two, I have two times X minus pi, close it, close it, minus one. Now what this looks like is normally, if I have this number, I would say, ah, the way you find the period is you do two pi over two. Mm -mm -mm. Now it's regular pi over two instead of two pi over two. So my period is now pi over two. This is going to shift to the right pi and shift down negative one, okay? So what is the period? Pi over two. What is the frequency? Regular two. What is an equation for all vertical asymptotes? Oh, okay. Uh, well, if my, let's draw this out and then I'll do the vertical asymptotes. Okay, so first things first, uh, my new origin, so to speak, has me going right pi down two. So things are gonna start right there. My period is pi over two. Right, so uh, what that means is pi over two to the right, pi over two to the left. And I'm gonna go pi over two every that many times. So now I'm drawing out my vertical asymptotes. Hmm. This is fun. Now, as I'm doing this, uh, I'm going to remember what I wrote out in the previous slide, what tangent looks like, okay? And now tangent's going to go through negative one through each of these. So here, 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 here. And it's gonna kind of look like the, oh gosh. So bad at these. All right, so let's try to curve things. Yeah, there we go. All right, so wow, better. Wow, kind of missed the dot, but that's all right. You get the idea. Look, problem solved. Wow, 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 wow. Now, <clears throat> I'm not going to worry about the ones to the left and to the right at the very end. I've done enough. Now, the equation for all the vertical asymptotes looks like what's happening is I could pick one vertical asymptote. Like, that's pi over 4. Right there. That's pi over 4. So, what's happening is it's going to be a vertical line. So, x equals. It's going to have a period of pi over 2. So, what I can do is if I pick, uh, like, pi 
over 2k and just add pi over 4, that should do the job. Okay, so like if this was 0, I would have 0 plus pi over 4, nailed it. If this was 1, I'd have pi over 2 plus pi over 4, which is going to be that guy, nailed it. And then I could choose uh, any one I want. But yeah, those are uh, all the vertical asymptotes for tangent. Isn't that neat? Given an angle theta in standard position where sine theta equals cos theta equals root 2 over 2, what is tan theta? Oh, this is going to be super easy. Tan theta is sine theta over cos theta. I already told you what sine theta and cos theta are. Sine theta is root 2 over 2. Cos theta is root 2 over 2. Something over itself is just 1. Now, this makes sense, and here's why. Tangent represents sine, which is a y value. Cosine represents x, which is an x value. Okay, now, y over x, that's like up and over. <gasps> this is slope. And if I go up root 2 over 2 and over root 2 over 2, that's a perfect slope of regular 1. Oh, it makes sense how this makes sense, which takes us to B. What is the slope of the terminal ray? Well, the slope of the terminal ray is tangent. And I just found out that tan theta equals 1. So it's the same exact answer. Look at that. A little definition for you. All right, wardrobe change, location change. I'm at my home uh, and just in time to do this ugly, terrible, ugly problem. First things first. This is the original function that I'm giving you. It's a mess. It goes up to three, goes down to negative three. It moves to the right a little bit. It has a different period. And I'm giving you a domain. Not only is that a thing, I don't even care about the graph. I don't care about any of that. I want you to find the inverse, which is going to be a mess. So what I always do when finding the inverse is f of x drives me nuts. So I'm going to change it to y. So y equals 3 sine pi x minus pi over 2. And step number one when finding the inverse is flip-flop the x and the y. So x equals 3 sine pi y minus pi over 2. So many pi's. <laughs> it's like we're at Thanksgiving. Uh, now I need to solve for the new y, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of that 3 because that's really the only thing I can do, and I'm going to divide 3 from both sides and let me move that over here. So x over 3, I'm going to need all this space. I'm going to want all this space, especially for graphing. Uh, x over 3 equals, you're now gone, and you know what? I know what's next, so let me leave the space, sine parentheses pi y minus pi over 2. Now, all the other stuff lives within the sign, so the next step is to get rid of the sign. How do I get rid of the sign? Inverse sign both sides. So inverse sign u and inverse sign u. That allows these to cross out, and now I have sine inverse of x over 3 equals pi y minus pi over 2, which is, you know, manageable. Still gross, but manageable. Add pi over 2 to both sides, so inverse sine of x over 3 plus pi over 2 equals pi y. And rather divide everything by pi, which I could do. I'm going to multiply both sides by 1 over pi because it's going to help me deal with the fact that I have two things and distributed property and a pi that's going to disappear. It's going to make it look prettier at the end of the day. Now, the nice thing is y is now all by itself. y, which becomes f inverse. So let me write it out as f inverse of x. 1 over pi times sine of x over 3. Inverse sine of x over 3 is 1 over pi times inverse sine of x over 3. Distribute. 1 over pi times pi over 2. The pi's cancel out as a half. All right. Great. Now, the graph of an inverse sine, okay, normally is the graph of the inverse of a regular sine. Okay, regular sine look like this, okay? 
graph of an inverse sine you're thinking is probably going to look like this. But here's the problem. That's not a function. That's why I gave you that domain, because this is what's going to happen now. Since this guy, this guy right here has a alt amplitude, I almost said altitude, amplitude of three, the range of this guy is negative three to three because the amplitude is the range, gives the range. I have no vertical transformations. I'm not moving up or down. So that is my range for sure. This is my domain. And if you're like, well, what do we care? We're not graphing the original function. What do we care? Well, if I'm supposed to graph the inverse, I care about the domain of the original and the range of the original because the range of the original is the domain of the inverse. Uh, and the domain of the original is the range of the inverse. So what I get is I get this guy right here. Okay, it's going to look like this. Uh, just, well, it's going to look like that. Okay, this is my function. It's going to stretch out to negative three and three, and it's going to have a range of zero to one, which means it's going to have, we're not going to call it midline, but it's kind of like, like our midline of one half. Okay, so let me try to draw that out one more time. Okay, because that's not, that's not, doesn't look good at all. Okay, not that that looks even better. One, two, three, one, two, three, one. Okay, and it's going to go here and kind of go like that. Just imagine more of a curve, like a, a change of concavity should happen. Here, let me do this. Let me make it bold. That way no one will ever notice how bad it looks. So if you kind of can see it, a ch slight change of concavity, like right there on the y-axis. Not easy, not fun. Hopefully you'll never have to do that like on a test. But we did it here and, you know, that's that's the battle. Great, I have to do another one. Do I? No. Oh, thank you, Jesus. All right, I have 10. F of x equals 10. I'm going to sketch regular f of x. I can handle this. But instead of sketching the original, I'm going to do it by making a table. All right, so what does that mean? Well, let's graph regular f of x. Or let's graph, uh, yeah, let's make a table. Not graph, but make a table of regular f of x. Let me adjust my pad because I'm, all my lines are crooked. Um, f of x tangent has a period of pi and starts out at 0, 0. Remember, tangent looks like this and goes through the origin, which means it only stretches out to negative pi over 2. So I'll start at negative pi over 2. I'll do negative pi over 4, 0 pi over 4, and pi over 2. Okay, the inverse, or the tangent of negative pi over 2 is undefined. Okay, vertical asymptote. Vertical asymptote. Oof. It's supposed to say done. I had a timer, and I forgot that I had a timer. At negative pi over 2, or negative pi over 4, it's negative 1. At 0, it's 0. At pi over 4, it's 1. And here we're undefined again. Okay, now I'm going to sketch the F inverse by flipping everything. Okay, so the F inverse is going to look a little something like this. So X, F inverse, uh, I am undefined at negative pi over two, uh, at uh, pi over four, or at negative one, and then zero, one, undefined. I have negative pi over four, zero, uh, pi over four, pi over two. Okay. Okay. Now, here's the thing. If at X, I'm undefined, right? That means over here, 
was a vertical asymptote. So if over here is a vertical asymptote, what happens here is going to be a horizontal asymptote because of the way um, inverses work. So at negative pi over two, which I'll call this negative pi over two, so you would be pi over four, negative pi over four, you would be uh, positive pi over four, you would be positive pi over two. We have horizontal asymptotes, that looks awful, here and here and here. At negative one, I'm at negative pi over four, zero, zero. And at positive one, I'm at regular pi over four. So the graph is going to basically limit out here and look like that. Okay. So describing this, what would this look like? Well, this is a, uh, let me use AP pre-calculus words. This is a horizontal shift positive six units or six units to the right. And this is a vertical shift positive four units or four units up. So basically you take the red thing and go, bloop, bloop. you gotta make those noises, otherwise it doesn't count. Also, you have to write out the word right, but draw an arrow from up for up because I'm an idiot. All right, now I have to sketch another graph and it's going to be two cosecant pi theta minus pi plus one. All right, all right. Cosecant, if you remember, is the same as one over sine. So this follows a lot of the sine rules, but sine acts as our kind of like our blueprint, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to treat this like a sine. The sine is going to give us our blueprint, and from there we can draw the cosine. Cosine and secant, when graphed, look like these parabolas that kind of, you know, flip-flop, go up, down, up, down, up, down. By drawing out sine or cosine, depending on if this was secant, as like a blueprint, if we were to draw this out, the blueprint lets us know which parabolas go up? Which parabolas go down? Where do they start? Stuff like that. So I look at a guy like this, right? Nothing in front of theta, which tells me the period is 2 pi, right? Uh, 2 is in front of cosecant, which tells me the amplitude is 2, okay? Uh, a horizontal phase shift of positive pi, which means right pi units, and I go up one. Okay, so the blueprint for this guy is going to be a sign. It's going to be a sign that I go right pi up one and would normally start right here. Okay, now the red that I'm going to draw is going to be my blueprint. The blue that I'm going to draw is going to be my actual graph. Okay, so my blueprint, period of 2 pi, so you repeat the process here, you repeat the process here, you repeat the process here, okay? Since this is sine and I'm not flipping it upside down, I'm going to uh, hit my midline every pi, and since the amplitude is 2, I'm going to go up 2, hit down 2. So going in reverse down to, oh, hold on, made a mistake there. Let's move you up because that would be going down three. Put a dot here. So you would be going down, going up, going down, going up. Now again, this is my blueprint. This is not at all my secant graph, cosecant graph. Okay, but by doing this, we now know how our graph is going to behave, okay? Where the midline of my sign would be, would be my vertical asymptotes, okay? So if you wanted to, if you really wanted to go above and beyond, put your vertical asymptotes right here, okay? Where the midline would be. The midline uh, 
is a line that goes through the middle, goes through the inflection points, goes through where you cross your x-axis, you know, stuff like that. All right, almost done, almost done, almost, almost done. And then I can graph my actual graph, which is not going to look good. Singing. All right, so peaks out there, bottoms out there, peaks out there, bottoms out there, peaks out there, bottoms out there. Parabola opening upwards here, parabola opening downwards there. Parabola opening upwards here, parabola opening downwards there. Parabola opening upwards here. Oh gosh, <laughs> I was doing so well. I was doing so well. I had a little thing in the way. Let me move that over. Uh, parabola going downwards here. There you go. Parabola upwards here. Parabola downwards there. All right. Fun. All right. Solve. Negative 6 root 3 equals negative 9 cosecant 3. Uh, theta. I don't like cosecant. I'm going to write it out as sine. So I'm going to write this out as negative 6 root 3. Uh, let me do this over 1. You'll see why I'm doing this, although it's not a necessary step. Equals negative 9 over sine 3 theta. Now that I wrote it out as a proportional, I can treat it as a proportional. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to multiply you to each other, crisscross applesauce. So you are now uh, negative 9 equals ugh, negative 6 root 3, 3 pi, sine 3 pi. Negative 6 root 3, sine 3 pi. That's an M. And we'll just pretend it's not there. Uh, let's divide both sides by negative 6 root 3. Let's divide both sides by negative 6 root 3. Cross u out. You become positive 3 over 2 root 3, but root 3 on the bottom is bad. So positive 3 over 2 root 3. I have to multiply the top and the bottom by root 3. Okay. And what that gives us, let me continue the rest. Let me get rid of that m. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, 2 root 3 times root 3 is 6. 3 root 3 on the top. That simplifies further. Is equal to sine 3 theta. Okay. That becomes root 3 over 2. Equals leave some space. Sine 3 theta. In order to unleash uh, theta, I have to inverse sine both sides. So inverse sine, inverse sine. It crosses you out. So I have the inverse sine of root 3 over 2 equals 3 theta. Now, <clears throat> inverse sine of root 3 over 2 is going to be pi over 3. So that equals 3 theta. Okay. And also 2 pi over 3 because sine is positive in quadrants 1 and 2. So 2 pi over 3 equals 3 theta. Divide both sides by 3 or multiply both sides by a third. The bottom's going to become 9 on both of those. So you get theta, <coughs> excuse me, equals pi over 9. And I'm going to leave some space and you'll see why. Uh, and 2 pi over 9. 9. Can I get rid of that 3? Now, okay. The finger's coming up again, and here's why. The original problem is 3 theta. Normally, I'd be done. But since this is 3 theta, uh, I have a period 
or frequency that is three, which means this cycle repeats three times if we're talking about between uh, three or like, and first off, I didn't even say, uh, oh, okay, so that's another thing. I didn't even say any bounds, so I have to answer this as an equation, right? Well, what's gonna happen is this is going to repeat itself every three times per two pi, which means you're going to have a period that is now two pi over three. So what's going to happen here is you're going to add two pi over three K to that and two pi over three K to that so that between zero and two pi, you're actually going to get six possible solutions. And since I didn't give you an interval, I have an infinite amount of solutions, so I have to say that. K is an integer, I guess I have to say that as well. What a gross, awful, terrible problem. Gross. All right, for this one, I actually do have an interval, which makes life a little bit, a little bit, a little bit easier. But this problem is still kind of gross, except for the fact that I have a bunch of coses uh, lying all over the place. So let me get rid of the one that's over here. So let me subtract two cos theta from you. Seems to make sense. So now I have two root three cos theta sine theta minus three cos theta equals nothing. I have a cos in common, so let's pull it out. Let's bring out a cosine theta. That leaves me, factor it out. That leaves me with two root three sine theta minus three equals zero. Now, fortunately, unlike the last one, uh, no frequency issues here. Everything is the way it should be. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, uh, what I have to do is I have to set each one equal to zero. So the first one's lovely. Cos theta equals zero means I inverse cosine both sides and theta is going to be the inverse cosine of zero. And the inverse cosine of zero happens at two spots, pi over two and three pi over two. So theta is pi over two and three pi over two. And again, don't have to worry about the weird period stuff that we saw before. Okay. Everything's exactly where it needs to be. Hooray. Now the other one is going to be a little less pleasant. Two root three sine theta minus three equals zero. Add three. Two root three sine theta equals three. <sighs> Divide both sides by two root three. So you have sine theta equals three over two root three. That's against the rules. So multiply the top and the bottom by root three and root three. Okay, that gives you sine theta equals three root three over six, which simplifies two root three over two. Ah, much nicer. Now you inverse sine both sides. And so the in, so theta is going to be the inverse sine of root three over two. So very similar to the last one, uh, the inverse sine of root three over two is pi over three and two pi over three. And that's the only two spots as long as the period is normal that you have to worry about between zero and two pi. So my final answer is going to be u and u all eight possible, all, all four possibilities. Yeah. Yeah, pretty awesome. All right, solve on the interval zero and two pi. I have sine squared theta equals sine theta plus one minus sine squared theta. Let's move everything to the left. Okay, so let's subtract sine theta, let's subtract one, let's add sine squared theta. That way it equals zero because I sense some factoring that's gonna happen. If I add sine squared theta to sine squared theta, that gets me two sine squared theta minus sine theta minus one. Now, if you're looking at this and a little thought bubble pops in your head and you're thinking, bloop, 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 that's a thought bubble. 
a squared two, a squared minus a minus one, factors out to two a plus one times a minus one, you're right. But instead of sine, or instead of a, we have sine. So this factors out to two sine theta plus one, regular sine theta minus one equals zero. Okay. And now you just set each one equal to zero and solve. Uh, so you would be two sine theta plus one equals zero. Subtract one sine two sine theta equals negative one. Divide by two sine theta equals negative one over two. Inverse sine, inverse sine. And the inverse sine of negative a half is 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. So theta is 7 pi over 6 and then the other side, which is 11 pi over 6. This one's a little bit friendlier. Sine theta minus 1 equals 0. Add 1. Uh, and so sine theta is going to equal 1, inverse sine, inverse sine. And that's only going to happen once at pi over 2. No. Yeah, pi over 2. Because it peaks out. It won't happen again. And that's also because this is basically asking where on the unit circle is the y value uh, 1. And that happens at like the 90 degree angle, which is pi over 2. Uh, so there you go. Hello, 100%. I did it. All right. Another one. I think maybe the last solving one. This one's actually not that bad. Cos squared theta. I've seen that before. I've seen that on cos squared theta plus sine squared theta equals 1. Which means if I want to make u look more like u, what I can do is I can turn cos squared theta into 1 minus sine squared theta, which is what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. uh, and then what I will do is I will move everything to the right. So I will subtract 1, add sine squared theta, subtract 1, add sine squared theta. And it looks like I'm going to have myself a very, very, very similar problem to what I just did. Okay, I'm going to have zero, so I'll put it over here, equals sine squared theta uh, plus two sine theta plus one. Ah, a perfect square trinomial. That is sine theta plus 1 squared equals 0. So I don't have to do both. Sine theta plus 1 equals 0. Sine theta equals negative 1. Inverse sine, both sides. And that gets me theta equals 3 pi over 2. Now, no interval. So sine uh, of a theta is only going to be negative 1 once in the entire unit circle. So all we have to do is add 2 pi k to this, and then we've covered ourselves. So k is an integer. Well, we have more of these. I don't know why I put so many of these solving trig functions problems on this thing, but you know what? More time means more YouTube money in my pocket, baby. Now I can make about $40 a month. Let's, um, oh my gosh, let's, oh, I see it. I see it right away. 
we have ourselves a double angle formula. Now, uh, we saw these at the very beginning. Remember, it seems like long ago, but we saw these at the very beginning where we said that regular sine of two theta would be two sine cos theta. Okay, so this would be negative two sine theta cos theta. Mm -hmm. uh, similarly, we have, of course, nothing happens with root two sine theta. That's just normal. That's just normies. Uh, minus two four sine theta cos theta because two times two is this many. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add uh, four sine theta cos theta to both sides like so. And you know, while I'm at it, I'm not going to have all the space in the world. In fact, I'm not going to have any space in the world. I'm going to subtract root two sine theta from both sides as well. So everything is on the left. So that'll leave us with uh, two, right? Two sine theta cos theta. And if I subtract that from the right to the left, minus root two sine theta, set it equal to zero. All right, let's rip out a sine. Let's factor out a sine, and that's all I can factor out. I factored out the sine. <sighs> Ace of these. Minus root two equals zero. So the first one's going to be the lovely one. That's going to be sine theta equals zero. Inverse sine both sides. Theta is going to equal the inverse sine of zero, which happens three times. It happens twice. Now, when I created this problem, see how now this is where you would normally do it. You'll be like zero and pi, you know, because of the whole unit circle thing. But since I included two pi with this, I got to include that two pi as well. So it's going to happen at zero pi and two pi. Oh, oh, Nicholas or goat or whatever. I don't know. That was me being silly. Uh, all right, so now I have 2 cos theta minus root 2 equals 0. Add root 2 is 2 cos theta equals root 2. Divide both sides by 2, and you have cos theta equals root 2 over 2. Inverse cosine both sides, and you have the inverse cosine of root 2 over 2 which is going to give me pi over equals pi over four as an option because it's the x values and it's positive. So pi over four and seven pi over four. Yes. So both of all, all five of my answers are going to be zero pi, two pi, pi over four, and seven pi over four. Great. Find the exact value of cosine pi over 12. Well, we're finally done solving trig equations, but now we're introducing a new layer of hell called the angle and difference trigonometric identities. You see, I don't know what cosine pi over 12 is, but you do know what? You do know what? If I, if I do a little bit of math magic, Right, put this over 12. Okay, I know what 4 pi, or I know what, better yet, let's not say 4 pi, let's say I know what pi over 3 is, cosine of that. I know the cosine of pi over 4. So if I were to do this and make this 4 pi minus 3 pi, 
this ends up being that. Now, this is an unnecessary step. This is me just going over my thinking process so I can show what I'm really doing. By splitting it up like that, I can now kind of split it up like this, right? So this becomes four pi over 12 minus three pi over 12, which turns it into cos pi over three, something I know, minus pi over four, something I know, okay? Um, cosine of pi over three minus cosine of pi over four. Now, um, when I had the difference formula in that one slide that I show you, like the third or fourth slide in, uh, let me see if I can fit it up here. Cos uh, alpha minus beta is the same exact thing as cos alpha cos beta with the cosines, it's the opposite of what you want. So plus sine alpha sine beta. So this is going to end up being cos pi over three, cos pi over four, plus sine pi over three, sine pi over four. Cos pi over three is a half. Cos pi over four is root two over two. Plus sine pi over three is root three over two. Have to think about that one. And then sine pi over four is also root two over two. Because these guys uh, are also root two over two. <clears throat> so multiply these guys. One times root two is root two. Two times two is four plus root six over four. Add the fractions. Don't combine the roots because you're adding them and they're different and you can't simplify any of them. Leave it like that. That's the exact value. Okay. Not plugging anything into your calculator, which we will do at some point soon, I'm sure. Now, if memory serves me correctly, if we're doing the subtraction one with cosine next, then we're probably doing a sine one with addition, which we kind of are, and we are, and it's backwards. So if you look back, which I'm not going to do because it's cheating, uh, when it was cosine and it was minus inside the parentheses, it was cos, cos plus sine, sine. This is sine, cos, cos, sine with a plus sign, which means that this is sine alpha plus beta. So I'll call you alpha and I'll call you beta. So this is the same thing as sine pi over nine plus two pi over nine, pi over nine plus two pi over nine is three pi over nine. Three pi over nine simplifies out to pi over three, which gives me root three over two. It was backwards. I liked it a whole lot easier. A whole lot easier. The base of a tree is 150 feet from a mark on the ground. Check out these drawing skills. Here's a tree, it's red. The base of a tree is 150 feet from a mark on the ground. Let's actually make that on the ground and let's put a mark right here. Oh, hi, Mark. <laughs> the room. Uh, the angle of elevation, which is wherever you are observing from, from that mark to the top of the tree is pi over three radians. So somebody is looking up there at the top of the tree and the angle is pi over three. Calculate the height of the tree. Now, geometry would tell you so Katoa, which is good, good. Uh, and then you would think adjacent, opposite, tangent, good, good. I'm gonna use more pre-calculus language, even though I already just used the geometry language and told you what to do. But if I view this, you know, as a X value, because, you know, it's the, the horizontal distance. And if I view this as a Y value, which is the vertical distance, and if I don't care about the hypotenuse, which is the radius, then yeah, I am going to use tangent. 
and tangent of my uh, angle is going to equal the y over x. And now it's just a matter of answering the question. Uh, tangent pi over 3 is equal to the y value, which is h, over the x value, which is 150. Okay, I don't remember what tan theta or tan pi over three is off the top of my head. So what I'll do is I'll quick change this to sine pi over three over cosine pi over three, because why the heck not? That's gonna equal h over 150. Sine pi over three is root three over two. Cosine pi over three is a half. And that's gonna equal h over 150. So if I multiply the top and the bottom by two, that makes the half go away and that crosses out. So you have root three equals h over 150. Multiply both sides by 150. And the height is going to be 150 root three, uh, feet. I don't think this is a calculator problem. Well, good job drawing the box, stupid. Um, nope, no calculator, so we're going to leave it like that. Now, those of you who might kind of recognize this, all right, if you're good at geometry, even though we're pretending like we don't know it, but if you remember your 30, 60, 90 triangles, uh, pi over 3 is a 60-degree angle, which makes this a 30, 60, 90 triangle, which makes this, this, by the way, uh, yeah, you would just divide it by root three. Um, and then this would be, if I cared about this would be 300 root three, but I don't care about that. I don't care about that. Trees. The Lorax, he speaks for them. Remember that guy? Uh Oh, <gasps> there's my calculator. Oh, it's time. It's time. It's time. A man whose eyes are 6.1 feet off the ground is flying a kite. At a moment, the string of the kite is taut, love that word, and is 143.2 feet long. The kite is that many feet off the ground. What is the angle of elevation? Well, let's draw a man. Look at him. He's flying a kite. Oh, the string is taut. That is a kite. Uh, there's the thing, and then like ribbons or something. I don't know kites anymore in 2024 no one flies kites uh he is 6.1 feet off the ground i'll get to that in a moment at a moment the string of the kite is taut and is 143.2 feet long the kite is 36.4 feet off the ground He is 6.1 feet off the ground. Hmm. Uh, what is the angle of elevation? All right. <clears throat> so based off of this awful picture, this is what I have. I have a triangle. I have a theta. You don't change. You do. Uh, we care about this angle right here. We know how high off the ground the kite is. Don't care about that. What I care about is how long this side is. And that side is going to be 96.4 minus 6.1, which is going to be 90.3. Okay, which I believe is a wrap station here in Southeast Pennsylvania. Now, um, if I were to try to do like Sokotoa again, I would be like, that's the opposite. And that's the hypotenuse, sine. Or we could view this as R and we can view this as Y. And you would have uh, sine equals sine theta equals uh, Y over R, right? Okay, so sine theta is going to equal 90.3 over, it might be a Christian radio station. I don't know. Inverse sine both sides. Now I'm curious. Uh, inverse both sides. And so that's what I'm going to need my calculator for. I'm going to need my calculator to find the inverse sine of 90.3 over 143.2. So let's 
take a little break over and figure that out. All right, this will not take long, not at all. Uh, let's just make sure we're set to radians. We are, so quit out of that. Inverse sine is going to be second sine. And then we have to type out 90.3 uh, divided by 143.2. I guess we can close the parentheses because it's proper. Hit enter. And that's 0.6823, blah, 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 radians. So we'll round it to 0.682 radians. All right, Mr. Calculator, you have spoken 0.682. I've heard of Blink 182, but 0.682, not the same at all. Radians, though, we're dealing with radians because that's what AP Precalculus deals with. Okay. All right. <clears throat> A pendulum ride is an amusement park. Don't I have a picture? Like, and my face is probably covering it. No. Okay. A pendulum ride is an amusement park attraction that rotates in complete circles. At phase two of the ride, the time in seconds can be modeled by the equation T equals 4.8 over pi inverse sine. Remember, arc sine is inverse sine. H minus 74.3 over 70.7 uh, in parentheses for H feet. How long after phase two begins does the height reach 100 feet? So what I need to do is I need to graph this guy in my calculator, and I'm going to also graph 100 in my calculator and see what I get. So I believe I made a stupid mistake and said before that I needed to graph this. I actually don't need to graph this. Um, I have this backwards. H is my height, and it tells me to find out when the time that this hits 100. So all I have to do is type in the original formula and replace that H with 100. So uh, 4.8 divided by pi, pi is second caret thingy, close it, inverse sine of, let's open up another set of parentheses because I'm always nervous, and this is where I get 100, 100 minus 74.3. Three, close it and divide it by 70.7 and that'll get me my answer. So no graphing needed for this one. I, I was wrong. It's the first time for everything. What do we get? We get 0 0.5684. So we'll say 0 0.568 seconds. Not long at all. All right. 0 0.568 seconds. Didn't take long at all. Didn't take long at all. Solve T equals 4.8 pi arc sine of that function for H. All right, so I'm going to rewrite sine as inverse sine because it's the same exact thing. And while I'm at it, why don't I multiply both sides by pi over 4.8? So let's do that first. I'm going to multiply both sides by pi over 4.8 that allows those guys to go away so pi t over 4.8 is going to equal the inverse sine of h minus 74.3 over 70.7 okay now to undo an inverse sine what you do is regular sine so if I regular sine both sides, which I don't have the space to write out, I get regular sine of pi t over 4.8. That equals h minus 74.3 over 70.7. The next step to get rid of the 70.7, multiply both sides to 70.7. That gives me 70.7 sine pi t over 4.8 equals h minus 74.3. One more step, add 74.3 to both sides, add 74.3 to both sides, okay? And I'm going to move h to the left. h equals 70.7 sine pi 
t over 4.8 plus 74.3. If phase two lasts 26.8 seconds, how many times is the height of 127.5 reach? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to graph this guy now. And I'm going to also graph 127.5 and see how many times my sine function is going to cross 127.5 over the interval that I'm given right there, 26.8. All right, now I'm going to do a little bit of the graphing. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to graph the function that I just came up with, 70.7 sine uh what do i have pi t so pi second that t is x divide that by 4.8 so 4.8 close the parentheses plus 74.3 now that plus 74.3 represents a vertical shift so i'm not going to see anything when i hit graph oh i stand corrected but i don't see what i really want to see um which was the other side of the mountain. I think that's a song. Uh, but anyway, I care about what's going on for the first 26.8 seconds. So, and I also care, what, the other magic number is what? Uh, how many times is it 127.5? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my window. So I need to go to 26.8. So we'll make it 0 to 26.8. Because I don't really need to find the intercepts. Was it 26.8? Let me go back and check. 26.8. 26.8. And then we'll bump this up to 200. Okay. And then what I'm also going to do is I'm going to graph the fact that we're hitting the height of 127.5. So I'm going to go down to 127. 0.5. And this will give me how, that's an 8. This will give me the amount of times my sine graph is going to hit that line. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's my answer. Six. Name an interval where the height is decreasing. So let's go to my calculator and find that out. All right, so to find a decreasing interval, I got rid of the other part that I was dealing with. What I want to do is I want to find one of these. Okay, so from here to here, or from here to here, or from here to here, let's do the first one because why not? Second calc, uh, maximum will allow me to find where it begins decreasing. So uh, let's move to the left just a little bit, hit enter. Let's move to the right a little bit, hit enter, and by hitting enter again, it gives me a maximum value of, what is that, 2.4, oh, 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 oh. So we'll say 2.4. Now it starts decreasing here up until we hit that minimum value. So why don't we find out what that minimum, va minimum value, minimum value is. So second, calc, let's find the minimum value, three. Let's go to the right a bit. Let's hit enter. Let's go to the right some more. Let's hit enter. Let's hit enter again. And that gets me 7.19999, which is 7.2. So one of my options, and there's two others, is we're decreasing between 2.4 seconds and 7.2 seconds. <laughs> That was a doozy. By the way, fun fact, I have the flu. I did this whole video while having the flu. That's how much I care about you guys and your education. I love you. Thanks for watching all my videos. Please continue to do so. Um, one more of these and then that'll do it for unit three. So fun stuff. Thanks for watching as always. Have a blessed day. Bye.